Hello and welcome to a generational market chip workshop for Hadoop and Cloud. My name is Ajit Kalura and I'm a solution architect within Informatica Pre-Sales Group. Our agenda for today's workshop is we'll be working on three labs. Uh, these are based on the newer concept used in our IT landscape today. The first one is around self-service analytics. The second one is data streaming followed by launch and after launch we'll work on the third use case that's hybrid cloud computing. The goal here is to have the right building blocks to set up your next gen analytic environments and you are prepared for the generational market shift that is happening now. So with that, I'll start with data in our lives. Uh, let's acknowledge the fact that the reason why we're here is because of data. Data about each one of us is collected on minute by minute basis by actions that we perform such as credit card, uh, personal email, posting stuff on social media, uh, apps on our smartphone. There is actually 2.5 quintillion bytes of data that is getting generated from this new set of application and, and gadgets. Let's run through a few scenarios of how data is helping uh, the way we live our lives. Um, you're probably familiar with smart variable gadgets like Fitbit that is constantly monitoring our health, which in turn is making us healthy. Uh, smart predictable technologies in our cars are saving lives. Social media is changing how we start uh, and do business, how we stay in touch with people, what we can influence, where we get our news from. Uh, smart devices um, in smart homes, such as smart thermostat, smart light, um, smart refrigerator, is not only providing us comfort and convenience, at the same time helping planet by making our house more energy efficient. Uh, this is all possible because of companies that have started monetizing on this new set of data. So with a flood of data available to business these days, organizations are turning into analytic solution to extract meaning from the huge volume of data to help improve in decision making. Uh, in this maturity graph, you notice there is four set of um, analytics that you can perform. The first one is the descriptive analytics. In this form, um, you use data aggregation and data mining techniques to find out what has happened in past. Diagnostic is a form of advanced analytics which examines data or content to answer question what, why did it happen? Predictive analytics is uh, the form in which you use modeling and forecasting techniques to understand the future, uh, what could happen. And this is a form that everyone is kind of marching towards. There are different categories, subcategories as part of um, this analytics such as customer predictive analytics that is focused on acquiring and retaining um, and growing your customer base. Your operational analytics is around planning, managing and maximizing your resources. Fraud uh, analytics uh, is around monitoring and detecting and controlling fraudulent activity. Then the final form is the pres uh, pres uh, prescriptive analytics that uses optimization and simulation algorithm to advise on possible outcome and answer uh, what should we do. So the, even though companies that have been running sound and stable organ, um, operation in past decade have reconsidered many aspects of their approach to lead and manage their business. The four big market shift that we're noticing is organizations are harnessing the power of big data. They're moving data center to cloud or using some kind of hybrid model. They're adopting open source software and they're doing continuous integration and um, delivery and deployment. So let's drill down into each one of these categories uh, and see how companies are benefit, benefiting out of this move. So the first one is um, harnessing the power of big data. With big data technology such as Hadoop, it, uh, it makes it possible to store and process large amount of data using commodity hardware at relatively cheap cost. This additional distributed computing power allows organization to combine feeds such as social media, internet of things, and in turn, allows them to make faster and better decision. Speed of processing data allows them to launch new products and provide better service to their customer. So data warehouse offloading is the first step that companies are taking to adopt big data within their organization. They move ETL intensive workload and unused data to Hadoop, thus freeing up uh, valuable data warehouse resources for other critical analytic purposes. 
The next shift is around journey to cloud. Organizations have started realizing that it's not efficient to run data center 24 by 7 just to process data in a certain batch window. And that too, when they need additional horsepower, it's not available. So the top reason why companies are moving towards cloud is around scalability. The elasticity on cloud makes it easy to scale their environment up or down and handle sudden influx of demand. Cloud infrastructure is easy to monitor and um, admin, uh, administer. You don't have to worry about hardware system, backup, disaster recovery, operating system upgrades, and more. Subscription cloud solution provides predictable budget. Um, cloud provides a common platform to integrate with other cloud SaaS application. Uh, sometimes cloud infrastructure is more secure than on-premise. Well, that's something used to be a sticking point with companies and with what they've realized is uh, companies, uh, the vendors, uh, cloud vendors are uh, have stringent rule to implement things like SOC 2 and SAE 16. Um, so they're finding it cloud is much more secure than uh, their infrastructure. If you if you inter uh, if you have internet, you can collect connect to cloud infrastructure from anywhere in the world. So depending on the visibility of your end user, you can adopt the right model, such as software as a service, platform as a service, or infrastructure as a service. The next uh, wave is adoption of open source. Um, the open source, the scope of open source has gone beyond the basic development tools and is now an integral part of IT product stack. CIOs are empowering their front-end um, developers to adopt project that drives innovation. So open source is providing organization with much more variety. I mean, companies that used to rely on Oracle and Teradata are now first looking at cloud data and Hortonworks for distributed processing. For storage infrastructure and compute layer, they used to look at Sun and EMC. Now they're exploring Amazon, Nginx, Docker, etc. So Open source is easier. You can just download and try it out. Um, it saves money on license fees and companies are, are you know, avoid vendor lock-in. This is another shift that we're noticing within organization on how they develop application. Organizations are now moving away from de developing monolithic application that are too complicated, um, complicated to develop and test and often breaks when deployed to production or business has changed by the time they deploy. They're now taking more agile approach and moving towards this concept of microservices um, and, and continuous integration development and deployment. This is all made possible by frameworks such as DevOps, which breaks the monolithic application into microservices and deploys them as container. Microservices en so, uh, encourages software developer to decouple software into smaller functional pieces. Uh, container extends this decoupling, separating the software from underlying hardware. And then DevOps allows continuous collaboration and communication between software developers and IT professional while automating the process of software delivery and infrastructure changes. Microservices is about scaling out rather than scaling up. The result is applications that are faster to build, easier to maintain while having overall high quality. So we talked about how data is changing the way we do our business. Now let's talk about some of the challenges associated with this next gen analytics. Some of the commonly asked questions is how do we securely share data between um, data scientists and app developers um, and make sure that the data is not abused? How do you handle complexity of long running integration and manual processes? And then how do you deal with variety, velocity and at the volume which your data is, is getting ingested? And then finally around management, how do you find, track, document, catalog and govern your data? So for that purpose, with Informatica being leader in data management space, we created this highly scalable referential, uh, reference architecture diagram to take care of your big data cloud, uh, data streaming, data governance, data visualization need by using best of open source and Informatica product stack. 
we named it next gen analytics building blocks uh, and let me start explaining how this diagram uh, works right so there are two types of data that you typically deal with within organization one is the fast data lane uh, this in this you're pretty much dealing with real-time sources such as social media web blocks machine data sensor data um, change data records um, internet of things use transport mechanisms such as uh, kafka to ingest this data um, or you probably have a data stream that sits uh, at the edge node and filter out the noise and then streams it into your next layer which is your streaming engine in this case um, diagram what you're no noticing is the informatica intelligent streaming option that allows you to filter transform aggregate and enrich the data all this is done at the distributed level uh, you can apply the predictive modeling on top of this while the data is is getting streamed and you'll get a chance to work with all this as part of the data streaming lab uh, this is just to connect all the dots together we'll drill down into each of these components individually when we start working on the lab so once your data has been streamed you now have an option of persisting the data into a file system layer like such as Hadoop file system or actually stream the data into a key value store or a columnar database like HBase or or load it into a hive table. You can also um, send out real-time alerts uh, or visualize that data in, in using real-time dashboard uh, by using open source technology such as Elasticsearch and Kibana. Then you have your traditional batch lane which you are dealing with your regular re relational sources, your unstructured data and maybe you're loading data that is already sitting in your Hadoop file um, and, and processing uh, data in batch mode. This is where Informatica Big Data Management product is being displayed in, in between. Now one thing it allows you to do is make your co code agnostic, um, independent of what uh, Hadoop distribution are you using. Uh, it also makes it independent of what engine you should be running against, right? So this is this is one of the biggest sticking point of uh, how technology is changing. There are companies that have invested a tremendous amount of um, resources on, on developing code base using MapReduce just to find out that that technology is obsolete. So they move on to the next one, which then again gets obsolete. So with the concept of big data management and smart executor, at least what you're doing is you're future proofing your uh, your implementation because this product will automatically select the right engine for execution purpose. Once you have staged your data, the next process that you need to have as part of your building block is the self-service. And this is where you realize that yeah, with the onslaught of data that is coming at various latency, your IT is unable to cope up with this and unable to provide your reports in a timely fashion. That's where you empower your uh, data business users by something um, called uh, self-service analytics. Um, and you use concept like data lake where you're actually letting them explore, curate, um, and publish data set for their own consumption purpose. You then move on to the cloud, which allows you to move data in and out of your um, um, on-premise. Um, you could do complete computing on the cloud, or you could have a hybrid model. You, you offload data into S3, Redshift, or any of the other SaaS provider. You, you still have your traditional uh, reporting layer, which is probably ClickView, Tableau, uh, MicroStrategy. But one thing that's important on all top of this is uh, having a right data governance uh, story. So that's where, um, you know, as part of this workshop, we don't have the data governance component as a lab. But what this, what you're seeing on the screen is that shows you that you need to be able to monitor your data quality score at each and every source, how, where it's generated. You should be able to figure out who my owner is for that feed and, and so on. So then we move on to the workshop setup. So this workshop is hosted on Amazon AWS. Each student is, um, each student will have two set of machines that they're dealing with. One is the Windows machine uh, that they will be using to RDP. Uh, and the second one is the Linux machine. 
Some components are shared between students such as Redshift, S3, Informatica, Cloud Agent. Um, so let's get started uh, with the lab. Okay, thank you.